Now another great weapon in your arsenal is your elbow and your forearm. Now elbow in uh, Japanese or in karate is called MP. MP. Now this can act as a block or an actual strike. You can strike with it either way. You can actually do a good block with it as well. And again, it's, it's, the beauty of it is that it keeps your arm close to you. It can protect you, but it can also strike. And it's also close to your body at all times. So it's a very efficient lock and strike. I'm just going to try that now. You can do this with me, you don't have to have a, a bag handy. You can imagine you're going to get that roundhouse swinging plug punch coming from this side. So we did the Joe Dendike block in the first and second. We've done that for two weeks there, so the only week we've got. If you just modify that slightly, instead of going up, you're just going to take it down to the side. You've still got that angle on it, and you're still using this part to block. So you're just going to take it to your side. So when that punch comes around, imagine that punch coming around, big round house, you're actually going to physically step inside it. And swing your body just inside it. There's two reasons for that. If you wait till the actual fist is there, you're going to absorb the power. You don't want that. If you cut it short, you get just inside that. A lot of the power is going to go past you. And also, when you move inside, you're closer to your opponent to deliver that strike. And you also side onto them. You're not facing them. If we block when we're facing them this way, they've got the option again of coming around with their other fist. Whereas if we're going to the side and moving in, it makes that more difficult for, for them to swing it around on that side. So just practice with me. Just, again, we're just going to relax stance. As you're at a bar, a club or something, you see this fist coming around. You're just going to move inside it. So from here, you're going to use your hip and your whole that body, like I said before, on your punches. You can deliver an MP stroke, an elbow stroke. Now, which part you use, entirely up to you. I always tend to use from the bony part there to this forearm bit, this sort of six inch bit here. Some people just use the point. I tend to, I think you've got more coverage and, and uh, it's a better strike if you hit just this part here. So from the knuckle part down about six inches. Imagine you just do you relax, you come inside and you take that straight through. Do it with me. One, and two. Use your hip. One, and two. Again, if you've got markers there, do it that way. It's ideal. You want to be aiming again for this bridge of the nose or the jaw. Probably easier for the bridge of the nose because what that does is it tends to make people dizzy and causes them all to be disorientated. That gives you your time then to move away. So from here, relax, lock, move inside, move inside, and then swing with that elbow strike. That's it, good. And don't forget, you always have to do both sides. Don't just stay on your nice, favourite, comfortable side. Same thing again, move in, and strike. Move in. Good. Now, you can pull away straight away. So you block, you put them pulled away. In other words, you pull back. That's obviously for the luxury of room. What I tend to do is the second technique. So if we're in close to the body, there's more areas to take advantage of. So if you moved in, you hit. What I would tend to do then is move to the groin, because you're in this position. And also with this elbow, imagine that's the head. It's nice to wrap around the head as you go with the knee. So what you basically get is block, and knee, yeah? Try that with me, we'll do it slower. Lock, strike, and knee. That's it, good. Lock, strike, and knee. And again, 
only go at your own speed, as I say, all the time. But try and get that fluent moment. Fluent. Again, it becomes one sort of one move. You block and coming in. Yeah? One. So the beauty of your knee is you do the groin. I also do the rib cage. So I usually find my knee coming up and do the rib cage. So I'm used to the kickboxing side of it. Do the mat, groin, or rib cage. One more, do it with me. You see, we generate quite a bit of power. I'm only probably two feet away. So this, this has got 100 kilograms of sand in it. So it's very heavy. So you see the power you can generate in a short space. Hit me with the elbow. Yes. If you use your hip, use your hip. You've got to use what power you've got. So we're going to finish off with a front kick. My going kick. One of my frustrations Occasionally when I go to a dojo, but as a visitor, I've seen people holding the kick pad. I see students going up to it, just doing this. They're not using the hip. In other words, they're just going through the motions. Don't get into the habit of doing that. Always use the power you've got. And always use your hip. The difference is amazing. If I keep the hip back, I do a kick, I try and kick sides up reasonably hard. That's all I get, yeah? Because I've kept the hip back. If I take the hip forward, you can see the difference in power, yeah? You don't need to do both legs, but it's easy. Keep the hip back, and keep pulling these kicks, and continue with your semi-contact, no good for self-defense. You've got to learn to feel that maximum extension of kick, the power. You've got to need to take the hip right through. Yes? A lot of difference, a lot of difference. So don't get into the habit of training week in, week out. Doing this, keeping your hip back. If you're in a practice, practice properly. Push through. Yes? Okay, fair bit to be going on with there. If you've got one of these, use it, use it, use it.